Hi, I'm Sue Donnelly. I'm the um, Executive Director of Queensland Theatre Company and I'd have to say the newly appointed one. I've been here about three and a half weeks so I have to apologise for um, being late because it's, um, I get lost a lot. And um, it's just one of those days. I woke up this morning, went for a swim early and got to the change rooms and found out I didn't have any underwear. And then I thought, oh, do you think I can wing it? Will they notice? So then I thought, no, I better go home and get some underwear. So anyway, it's been one of those days, but I do apologise again. <laughs> um, look, one, uh, QTC and, and me in particular, we're really excited about this project and um, particularly for someone who's coming from... Um, another city and one of the reasons I chose to come to Brisbane was because of the energy and vitality I can feel here and the, um, the sense of optimism and expansion and you know, giving those southern states a run for their money in terms of um, art. And, and of course Brisbane's been leading the way with this wonderful institution of GOMA. But um, we want to do it in theatre as well and we want to have some signature events like in terms of performance but we also want to make our home down in Montague um, road are very exciting and a place that people want to go to and that's why we really wanted to um, engage in trying to get a, something significant in terms of public art um, brought to our building if we can possibly do it. But, and there's a, a certain synergy in terms of Arne's work and, um, and QTC. We've both sort of, um, it's quite apparent I think in our branding that um, that our work like Arne's reflects energy and dynamism of colour and structure in an organic form, whereas what we've been doing is in our branding is sort of two-dimensional. With Arne's work it's a three-dimensional, it's out there, it's big, people can engage in it. And you know, the other thing we really like about it is the fact that his work um, has a big effect on various communities and it enables people to come together and to start a conversation. And, you know, complete strangers come together. I mean, I, we've spoken with him before. They come under the, the structures that he builds or, and they come around it and they share. And in this way, it's very similar to what theatre is about because theatre is about um, bringing people together, communities of people together to share and engage in, in wondrous things but in imagination and in creativity. And so we definitely think there's a very strong synergy between um, both what QTC is aiming to do and the work of Arne. So we're really lucky to have him here. I know he's, it's a wonder he's still awake actually because he's been having such a hectic schedule since the beginning of the week when we first met. And, um, you know, you pro he's going to talk to you obviously, but, I, you know, he's so busy. I understand that he's currently got six large scale exhibitions on at the moment and 20 public art projects on the go. And that this year he's going to be working in Brazil, New York, Shanghai, Miami, Moscow and in Brisbane with us. So you can see how we're trying to punch above our weight here. Uh, and while look, obviously a project of this scale is really um, often beyond the imagining of a kind of a mere theatre company, we're really hopeful about getting something happening and, we're, and for that reason we're extremely grateful for the, uh, the financial assistance that's come from the Queensland Government through Art in Place, which is the Queensland Public Art Fund, because otherwise um, this trip wouldn't have been made possible, the exploration of what's going to happen. And uh, we're also really thankful to um, GOMA for having us here because we like uh, having thing, doing things together and cooperating. And with that, and given I've been so late, I'm going to hand you over to the man of the moment and I'll sit down and listen. Thanks so much for coming. Welcome. So if you see the, the title, Cities as Open Air Museums, for me always my, my big fight, why uh, to, to build these installations in, in open air in, in cities. Can we get down maybe the lights here? Because I have them really. Somebody from the GOMA? So my, my big fight is that I think if, if you're educated through, through art, I think it's very, very important in, in, in our life. I think the, the problem is with um, museums and operas and, and uh, theatres, etc., is that only one or two percent of, of maximum of the, the public goes to these uh, cultural houses. 
So for me, it was the thing to reverse the, this, the system and really to confront and to bring art in, in the street. And not just art as a sculpture, but really as, um, as installations that people could go through and uh, a confrontation, not a confrontation only with the installation, but also with, uh, with themselves. So before to present the installation, uh, the, the, the work that I want to bring here in Brisbane is I want to present you some of my work. Um, one of the first ones that I did in, uh, it's not the first one, in 2006, because I started 15 years ago, but this one is a special one. It's at the Burning Man. They ask us to come and to build an, uh, an installation. So when we sent our first proposal, they thought really it was a joke, because the Burning Man was a, is a festival, and everything what you build there is that you need to burn it down. So it was the first time and the last time also that I burned one of my things down, and I'll explain you later. So when we sent the, the proposal to come over and to build this installation 25 meters high and 60 meters by 60 meters, they really thought, it's, this guys are com completely nuts. So the day of the opening that we could start to construct, I was there with plus minus 50 people and a lot of trucks and, and um, cranes and food and water, etc., etc. Because there in the desert, there's absolutely nothing. When I say nothing, the only thing that we can find there is only dust and sun. And it's a lot of sun, and it's very dry. So to give you an, an, an example, here we use 120 kilometers of wood, and only the fact for to, to drink and to cook and to wash, you know, these uh, blue bottles that you have in companies when you can put your glass under, we had 2,000 of them with us. We use more than 100 uh, cream to protect us to the 100 liter to, to protect us to the from the sun. So that's small figures, but to understand to be able to build this is a huge uh, uh, work behind to be able to uh, to build this thing. To build this one, it was a tough one. We built it in four weeks, but to build this in this kind of conditions between. 40 degrees in the day and between zero and five degrees in the night, believe me, that is, that is rough. We had uh, three shifts and I was the lucky one. I was in the, all the three shifts. So believe me, after four weeks, it was, um, it was really heavy. It's also emotional heavy because if you work with a, a team uh, during four weeks in the desert, in the sun, and when you build up these things, not everything is always go going well because it, it, you work with humans, you work with people, and in this kind of conditions, we had several, uh, it's not really fights, but it heavy, heavy tensions. When we, after, when we built this one, we had a party for four days in it. <laughs> that was a good thing. <laughs> but during this party, we had plus minus 2,500, 3,000 people inside of this thing. And that was the moment that we could celebrate. Most of my work are, stays longer than, than a couple of days. But this one was really yeah, strange because we could not really live these things. Because when we build it in cities, you have the time to, to enjoy them for years. But there was only for four days. So the day that we need to burn them, I was uh, working with um, people that uh, create these fire bombs. And there was, there was a nice side that I, with this Pyramids, we don't call these uh, people that like to Power burn. Techniques. Yeah, pyrotechnics. Uh, that was a nice experience, but for me, believe me, when you build this, uh, such thing up and you work for such a long time in these things and you need to burn down your own thing, believe me, that's, that's rough. That's really rough. The flames went up 100 meters high. We created a perimeter of 130 meters around and not only for the heat, but we knew that we will suck all the air out, and there we, we create, uh, I think we create five or six uh, tornadoes. But why I said in the beginning that will be my last thing that I, that I burned down, believe me, is that the emptiness that was this thing created in us, we that we, we built this thing, it was so huge. It was really huge. Still now when I'm talking about, I still remember this, this moment. And and first of all, never try this thing at home to burn such an installation down. Believe me, we worked a long time to prepare this thing. So here you see a little movie, how, how we did it, how it progressed, how it burned down. Oh. 
I'm sorry, I did. Believe me, when you're squeezed between these this flames on one side and the other side, 45,000 people that are sc screaming there, this experience was, was huge. It really was huge. Cityscape Brussels was in the, an installation that we built in the center of Brussels. There was an, uh, we built this at the border of actually the higher part of the city and the lower part of the city. And that is the, the, the higher part was more the rich part and the lower city was more the, let's say, the more the, the working, uh, working uh, part of the city. And the ground that we developed there was before was um, an empty ground. There was a lot of uh, drugs, addicts, homeless people, etc., etc. And in that part of the city, they asked us, really, can you do recreate the nice ambience that we had before? So we developed this installation and I think one of the most beautiful compliments that I ever had with this installation was a handwritten letter from a woman, I think she was 70 plus, and she said, finally, I speak again with my neighbors. So there, the, the thing is that we really build these this installations in city to, to recreate communication inside, inside the cities between, between people. Because before we had, we had markets, and in the market we, uh, we 100 years, 50 years ago, there, we, we give the news to, to each other, we speak with each other. Now we have friends all over the world and we chat and we have Facebook friends, but we don't speak anymore with our neighbors. So we rush through cities and for me this um, public, public installations is really to, in a certain way, to slow down people, but also to, to, to have this, install this communication between, between uh, people. And we saw really that it's, that it's working because when we install this installation, the whole area around the, the bars, restaurants, uh, the museums, etc., etc., was really uh, that gave such a boost that this whole area was really living again. This installation, normally it was mentioned to stay one year before they will construct this uh, building on it, and then in the end it stayed two years, and then they asked us to break it down because they had uh, the permits, and when we broke it down after, after um, two, two months, the the permit, uh, they cancel it, and so today this, the ground is still empty, and you can feel that this whole area is, is, is going down. The good thing is that when we take this thing down, it, that I think we create also that emptiness that people really start to think about, wow, we need really to do something with our, with our cities. And that, that is also the, the thing that I like with this temporary installations. Not all my installations are temporary, most of them uh, stay. But I like also the, the, the print installations. You think it's really chaotic, these installations? I think they're absolutely not. Because first of all, I don't believe in chaos, because after chaos, I believe only in, uh, in, in structure. And I think this installation, I think before, like I mentioned before, before we install this, these things is that the studies that we that we have before with the engineer and architects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to be able to to build this and all these things we have this in our in our own studio, because believe me, the, the in the beginning when I, I tried to find an engineer that could deliver me the the signed papers of to be able to build this, it was very difficult to find, and so that is that we developed this 15 years ago with a with an engineer in in a computer model to be able to calculate all the the power of wind, snow, uh, can be earthquakes, can be rain, etc., etc., on these installations. And today we have an experience. Uh, we worked on, on several parts on, on the world, and we have pictures already with, with installations with a meter, two meters snow on it. In wind, a day we had a twister went through our installations, and all the things around fly away, popped up, and our installation was still there. So it's really, I think it's working. It's an installation. It's built about 
crosses and triangles that we connect them together in, in three dimensional and that's how this thing is uh, strong enough to, to stay up. The Flemish Parliament, the good thing about this that was for the politics that I built this in, in Belgium and I don't, don't know if this, you saw this in the news but we had for more than two years no any government in Belgium and that was the moment in Belgium that everybody, everything worked so well. <laughs> that was a good thing. But while I was building this before we had this uh, political crisis in, in Belgium, is that that's my only installation that stayed there two years without any permits. So there was another funny thing that you build it so politicians. And there in the left corner, you see the size of these people stand, standing there under the installation, so you can understand to be the size of this installation. It's about 100 meters long and, and 20 meters high. And there's also we covered a street, so the cars and the buses uh, driving underneath. Before there was a street that nobody went in except the politics, and why I did this installation, they asked me today to make an installation inside of their building to try to be able to try to attract people, and I refused to build inside the building because there are only politics in the side of the building. So for me it was a fight to build this outside of the building, and there I connected the, the, two, uh, the two parliaments. So here you can see on the left side the picture in the winter and one in the summer. So the trees are really growing uh, through it. And we don't touch the, the building, even if you have the feeling touch the building is really growing between. And that's in a day in, in, in the weekend. So you see from really an empty street what it does in, uh, in, in the week. Beirut, Lebanon, it was a nice installation. It's an installation called uh, a stilt house. And why I start to build the stilt houses is that for me the research to um, what is my home, what is my house, what is my stilt house is as a child your first home is you have the, the table and overneath you, over, over top you, you have the blanket and you sit under, under this table and that's your first comfortable home. And when you grow up you, you cannot stay under this table anymore so you, you, you come underneath and your second, second home is your clothes because you're naked there, and you you start again to to search this comfortable uh, zone, so you close, and then you start to build. And the first thing what you do when you build is around your house again this these fences. But we don't have these fences not only around your, our house; we have them also in our mind. So, but when you have these fences, it's a horizontal uh, movement. When you put them up, you have a vertical movement, and that's um, that's like a, a ladder. And a ladder is a synonym that we. Uh, always try to grow up in our life, to go higher, to have the best view. But even that we try to have the best view and we cannot forget that, that we, the things that are happening under us. We, we don't have wings, uh, we are humans and we, are, we have our feet in, in the clay. So it, for me, this is cinnamon. This, this stilt house looks like, like a human and it's really to show to people that we cannot forget what, what is happening around us and that's the, my whole research with, with this uh, installation. The one also that we built here, it was really, uh, it was really, really warm. It was over the, the 40 degrees again, hot. Um, this installation is only built in, in, in wood and even again that you think it's look chaotic that we do just whatever we want. Now all these things are really uh, calculated. First we make a lot of uh, small models and then we go on the spot and the, uh, the calculations and the drawing and the engineers and then we build this, uh, these things up. The funny thing is that um, in whatever culture or where, wherever in the world we, we build this kind of installations and Beirut is actually, they don't have really, um, th for them it's not normal to put uh, art and on that scale in, in their streets, especially just after their war, they have other concerns. But they really, that, that installation helped to, to connect people again. And now we find a lot of, uh, of these uh, images where people, they have their marriages, they go really in front of these people, uh, in front of this uh, installation. And the contrast to see them with these marriage pictures and this contemporary art installation is, is quite, quite funny. But it's, I mean, it's worked. It, it's it's really an installation for 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 public. This one is an installation five meters by five meters and, and sixty meters high. And the nice thing is that I don't build them alone. It will be is is impossible. I I do all the models and the drawings etc. Is that with the team? It's the same team since fifteen years that that we build this thing together. You create this kind of 
found this kind of uh, friendship because we had a, a lot of uh, yeah, challenges that, that, that we went over. I remember an installation that we did in, in Germany the first time. So it was for Louis Vuitton, they asked us to do an installation and the mayor said, no, never you will be able to build an installation. And we had a big smile on our face and after um, a couple of days fighting with the politics, etc., etc., we had finally the permission, but what he didn't know, the mayor, that was we were bringing already all the wood in just behind the corner, and the moment it was signed, five minutes later we start to build because we had our, our deadlines. So when, when you go through all this kind of experience in, 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 in life through, through that process of bringing art in the street, you create really not only a bouncer with the people around, but also with, with the people who you work, who you deal uh, with it. And it's nice because also with we see we see a lot of different um, kind of people. It can, it's not only uh, uh, art dealers or museums, and it's especially this this politicians that needs to sign off. And it's always the same wherever we go. We need to explain that explain this from from the beginning on the whole process. Because when when we say that we will build an installation from 100 meters long in your street, and and we hang. 100 tons of wood in the air, politics, they're all, <laughs> they're all afraid and they say, wow, it's not possible. So, in Knokke, it's an installation that built at the coast, there with the, you see again with the wooden sticks, it was a private installation, a private semi, semi public, and was a man, he built a garage under the ground and he said, yeah, they're here, I want to give something back to the community, and we built this. There's a permanent installation standing at the, at the coast. And you see here really, with, with just with straight, uh, wooden wooden uh, sticks, beams, that we were able to give this, this kind of curves. Rouen France, that was a special one. That's an installation. Rouen France, they asked me, it's next to Paris, and there we built an installation over the Seine. And it's an installation, it's 140 meters long. It's about 120 tons that we put on the bridge. So you can really imagine the, ima imagine the, the calculations that we had to be able to to build this one, and especially for for the um, the vent. The funny story here again also is that the first I will tell the name. The name Camille is because um, it's the the wife of Monet. Monet painted many times this uh, this bridge, and that's why I called Camille. It was really to to make this love story, a bridge on on a bridge, and it was really con to 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 connect Rive Gauche and Rive Droit. Uh, Droit. That's the, um, the, ref, the left side and the right side of this uh, city. Because the left side it was really the bourgeoisie and the right side it was really the industrial um, uh, um, what is it, um, area. And on that installation, there was first we closed down the bridge. And if you can imagine that on that bridge, there is more than 40% of traffic went over that bridge. So when we closed that bridge in the beginning, we had a lot of people that tried to break down our fences because they wanted really to use that bridge. And not the other bridge was 250 meters on the left and 200 meters, 250 meters on the right. It was their bridge. And, and the, the, the funny thing is that while we start to build this installation up, more and more people start to, to, to like it. And in the end is that um, because it was an installation only was there for three months and on these three months we had uh, plus minus two million visitors and in the end and we didn't know this we knew this just after is they signed a huge petition and in the last night they were there with i think a couple of thousand people with this candle lights because we were building up in china and there was the last day before they break down they were all sitting under that that bridge and it was very very nice See, you see here just in a uh, common evening how this brings people um, together. That was for the, fourth of, uh, the 14th of July. There was a national uh, party of, uh, the, of friends. And you can see that the reason that we all only burned one down and the Burning Man is that all my other installations are very well protected against fire. So don't try to burn it, it will never work. So you can see here that we shoot a firework through the, from the installation down over the Seine. Friedrich Meyer Sculpture Park, 
that's one that we were built now in Michigan in 2013. You saw the size of of uh, Rouen. That will be the double of uh, Rouen. So this really the size of a cathedral. Another very important aspect is that on our installations, it's not the installation itself, but it's the whole communication around. Before we build an installation is that every time we go on the spot, we do a lot of research, especially for the history, what happened there on, on that area. Is that, uh, because it's for, for, for us it's important to understand how we will build, what kind of shape we will use, and also to have an interaction with the city where we go. So the, around that is that we, uh, we try to to have students on board that help us with to build installation. Okay, they stay on the ground floor, they never go up with us in, in, in the things, but still we give a lot of lectures. We, we show our, our opinion, uh, our studies behind it, how we proceed to be able to, to, to build these things. Also, we create a, um, a website around, and we always look um, in, in the air itself after writers that help to write blogs on, on this website. So it's a whole thing around. We make, a, we make books around, we make documentaries around. So the interaction with the city is also really, really important. Because for me, the most beautiful thing is, is not only to, to build that installation, but it's the moment that we cut the ribbon off, is that it's not my installation anymore. It will be really yours. And, and that is for me that gives me a really big satisfaction if I can see that my smile is going over to your face and when you start to smile and that you can be proud about, about your installation. So this whole interaction between this installation and the community, community around it for us is, is in the end more important than the installation itself. That's one that we built in Shanghai in, uh, in China. And that was one that we built for the Chinese government. And now they discovered us, so you can imagine how many installations we have already in order for the next the next years, and they really invest also a lot, a lot in uh, in culture for the moment, and that's a permanent in installation. The other thing that I forgot to tell to tell about Rouen, funny story, it was uh, the mayor invited us to to build this installation, and the the first prime minister of France was from an other politic uh, side, and they were really in big fights between uh, each other. And then when the, the first minister in the beginning he was again said, and when he saw how, how many attention we had with this, with this installation and how it was really supported by, by public, is that at the opening they were best friends. He was there to cut also the rubber. So it works on many, many levels. So we have, we have always a lot of jokes and, and fun, fun to be able to, to bring this kind of installations in, in, in cities. Louisiana Museum in Denmark, if you have ever the chance to, um, to travel to Europe and to visit Denmark, they have a fantastic, beautiful museum just at the border of the, of the sea. And there we, we built it, uh, my home, my house installation in, in the garden. So here you see the fences that we all have in our mind that we built around our house to, to feel as safe as, as possible. The Red Square, Moscow. Every year, somewhere in the world, I build installations for uh, Louis Vuitton, and I build two types of them. It's or we, we do a lot of charity in the world to help, or uh, kids or people in problems, whatever. We choose one charity, and we build together with Louis Vuitton. We donate the whole thing. But here, I will, they ask me to build one on the Red Square, and we will be the first one that have built an installation on the Red Square. It, it's all for the end of the year or beginning of next year, because now with the elections, with putting the whole thing around, we, have, we, we should have meetings next, next week, but they are postponed till next month. And that will be in the night with the lights around. Louisville, it's a little bit the same story as Rouen. There, there was, uh, they asked me to come to over to Louisville and to build an installation, and they showed me some, some uh, areas and markets and so on. So I said, no, this old bridge that is not used anymore, it was an old train bridge, about one kilometer long, that connects Kentucky with Indiana. And they, there's not a such a good understanding between these two, two cities. And I have already a lot of fun to be able to connect these two, two cities. So it's an old bridge, 
and we will weave this uh, installation about a kilometer long. But for me, it was also my fight is to make that uh, platform as more as an open air museum for as an open platform that other young artists could performance, dances, uh, music, uh, light shows, whatever. And, and this we are working now on. They take all the rails off. They are installing the, the ground floor. And then if everything is going well, we can start in 2014 to build this thing. It's really, really to, we cannot have a better, that's, a, that's not a real installation. That's just uh, making off. It's, um, it's really, t we cannot have a better image to, to show how we can make bridges between people. A day I had a good question. I make also a lot of smaller work. Not all my works are so, so, so big. So a day they asked me to make my self-portrait. And I said, wow, that's a good question, how I would make my self-portrait. So I didn't want to paint again with my old paints when I, when I did before. And this is my self-portrait. So you see, the glass cube, it presents the... The, the, my, 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 the, the crane, the, the, what is the bones, and what is inside is that uh, this is what is happening inside of my, my brains. And you think it's chaos, but I don't believe in chaos. It's only structure. And that is, um, that is how, how I think I am. And from this chaotic structure, I say I have a lot of energy is going in, in my body, a lot of life is, is going through it. So I start to make that this these waves and then you see in the back you see the, the mirror. And this mirror is really how I am. I think for for a part I'm I'm really open and another part I'm closed, but a part I'm open is this mirror. When you look into my work you have al already a half step in 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 my life and that's the part where I'd like to, to, to share. And then I make installations like this. You can imagine that we worked more than 700 hours just to glue these little sticks one by one in these uh, glass boxes. Now I will give a small presentation about the metal sculptures. When you see the wooden sculptures, they are more cozy. There's more to, 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 to make this nest feeling. There the metal sculptures is a little bit different. Here in Cannes, in, in France, you see it's a roundabout. It's just it's a small sculpture. I think it was 12, 14 meters high. But the one I want to speak is Marbella. That's a funny one. That's an installation. That's 15 meters and a half high, and this go in a house. So I will not explain how big the house is. But the funny thing is that we build it in Belgium in one piece, and we bring it over to Spain. It just arrived yesterday. And Everything went well over the highways. We couldn't take any bridge, so we need to go over uh, any, any tunnel. We, we used only the bridges. It was more than one week to, to travel from Belgium to Spain. It's only 2,000 kilometers. But the last curves in the city there, we could not take, so we cut down all the red lights, all the lightnings, all these things. So there was a good client that wanted to find us all the things. And in the end, so and on Tuesday, we will bring it in, in, the, in, in the house. So the, what we will do in with this installation, we put a lot of uh, projectors around and we do a kind of mapping. And the mapping is that when we project on the sculpture, we cut out all the forms and the, the sculpture we call the pulse and that will become really the heart of that, that house. So we will make a program on that sculpture that uh, we can project a lot of things. The, the clients, they will be able to write Texas, he will be able to write Texas to his wife. The kids will be able to make drawings on that sculpture, but all with, all with light. We will make a program that you will see that plants are growing on, on, on the sculpture. So it will be really something that is constantly in the night. It's, it's moving. It's, it will be really alive in, in, in that house, a real, a real heart. This, the atelier where I work in, in, in Belgium, I think I'm, I'm one of these classic artists. I think I, I really like to work with my hands and with my hands and everything what, I, what we design or, or shape 
we really, really do it with our hands. That's the reason that we only can do a few installations in, in, in a year, metal or in wood. And because I, I like to, to feel, and I think for me it's really also my, the honest way to, through, through my work, is really to, yeah, to work myself on this thing. Even though I have a, a large team today around me, but all the, the work go through my hands. Brussels, 2012, it's an area uh, a little bit like the cityscape. This whole era went down. In the 80s, it was really an era full of restaurants and bars. Now there's nothing anymore. And they ask us to, to build an installation. There are this installation called wind. Wind is also a very important thing in life. It blows us together, blows us um, apart. And, and wind, for me, it was this, this kind of energy that I really liked. So I tried to give wind a certain shape. There's a metal plate that we folded in, uh, in, in these in this shapes, and it goes up to 14, 16 meters high. And in the night, we will light this up from underneath, so you will think there's really like a big open fire in the middle of this uh, area. And, and we are sure that this is not a picture that built because we, will, we are cleaning the ground for the moment. It will all be these small yellow uh, white stones. And then because the, the green, except the trees, they say, but all the green we take it out and we make really like a public, a public park space, art space in the center of this, uh, in the city. And we are sure that in after we open this, this area, I think in, in a couple of years, you will see that the whole area will live again. You will see bars, restaurants, etc., etc. Berlin, Germany, that's, if everything goes well, it's for the end of the year. There you see this, the, schedule of the, uh, the, um, the scale of the little people next to it. If you thought it was uh, this installation in, in south of Spain was big, this is about 30 meters high, so you can already think the problems that we have to transport these things over the, over the street. Monaco, France, it's Prince Albert asked me to do an installation in, in Monaco, and there I think wind, we go a next step, there is the wind blow really through my installation. And so we crush and we fold more the things, and we put them all over the park just in front of the, the castle. Bordeaux, France was an installation that we did in the beginning of uh, 2011. So here you can see it was one of my first rocks that I squeezed together. It was a, they're still the small ones. They're going up to, to four or five, five meters high. And why I, I make this rock strangers is that for me there was to be able to reach the opposite as my wooden installations. Because rock strangers, for me, it's called like what we do with the, if a day we wake up and we have this very strange element in our, in our safe garden, because we live really like in a safe environment. And what we're doing with the, with the estrangement is that because wherever I go through, through, um, through cities, through whatever kind of culture, I can see that more and more people, they live really, really so safe as, as possible. But we are not used anymore to have strange things in our life. And, and for me, it's really to confront people with this unstrangement to see what they will do when they, they will embrace it, they will push it away. And we were making documentaries around the public art installations, metal installations that we build in cities. So we question a lot of people and, and the documentaries will be ready in, in uh, the end of the summer. And I hope that it's possible to, to show them here in the GOMA. That there you will really see what people do with, with this rock strangers, what is the confrontation and what is their reaction on, uh, on this, ins on this uh, rock strangers. That's a press that we developed for the moment. There we can press more than 30 ton. That's, that's a lot. But now we are developing a press that go over the, the 100 tons because I'm working on metal insulation, very thick and, and large scale. And, and it's nice because the, the whole research to... I make my own tools to be able to, to build these things. Here I'm heating the, this, this metal plates to have the right, the right folds in the, in, in, in the metal. See, these are not insulations anymore that you can just handle with your hands because here we're speaking about a couple of tons every, every piece, so it's, uh, it's really a lot. 
And I really like to, to be in that place between all these metal workers. In the end, we have almost the same color as the metal. And, and it's, it's a nice exchange because it's this, this, this people, they, are, they, are, they make also other, other stuff, like the normal classic, classic uh, way of working with metal. And then I come always there with completely opposite that, that I try to find in, in their work. And when I start to explain, yeah, I need to have a machine that can squeeze metal. They will say, you want to do what? And it's nice to go through this whole process. And so together with them, I, we developed already a lot of nice things. But to have also their reaction on, on my work, that's just fantastic to have this, uh, this exchange. And this was an installation for a private, private museum in, um, in Luxembourg. There's really the game like boys and toys. We like to play with this trucks and this big rocks. And Believe me, it's really a fantastic life if you if you if you are able to do this these things. And yeah, and it's it's a, it's an experience. With Frey, Frey sitting there, we have we have a lot of. Um, a lot of talks, do you remember when we built this and that? And the good thing is that we make also really good friends all over we, we go and, and we stay really in contact. So that today when, when, uh, when we build an installation somewhere in the world, a lot of people, they, they, they follow us from all over the world. So, and we, we put them also in, in connection. So that they, if, if we will build an installation here in Brisbane, it will not be only for the people of Brisbane. It will be for people worldwide that will be connected with with Brisbane, and that's exchange. I also so so like to do it. And I think the biggest challenge in, in the end, I think, is, is, um, is just myself. Because for me, the, the thing that inspired me the, the most is, is not really another artist, but it's more music, I'm really addicted to, to music. And in my studio, you know, immediately when I'm there or not, is that the music is playing also very loud. And it's going really from cl from classic music to to rock to uh, to heavy electronic music. But music, it's it's for me my biggest influence that bring me to uh, to my work. I, l I love really to to watch other other artists. I have a lot of good good friends that just create, and we we exchange a lot of ideas. But music is for me the one of the most important things in in, in my life that influence me that bring me to another another level. Ostende Belgium, that's a special installation when we speak about rock strangers. That's an installation that we are building actually at the moment, and that's at the Belgium coast. There we are, that's, they just built this long arm in, in, in the sea to break the, the waves, and there we built that installation. It will be about 100 meters long, 30 meters wide, and the biggest rock there is about 10, 12 meters high. Believe me, when you stand in front of this uh, this rock says the first is the, the first model and that's then the, the the final model. If you stand about this rock strangers, when I told you before about this estrangement, how you f how you could feel strange in front of something or you don't know how to handle, believe me, this rocks will take it over and they will take over this this power over you. So I'm very curious with the day that we ins install this. It's in, in in one month is that um, the documentary that we will make and to confront people, uh, not only to bring art in the street, uh, but it's this, yeah, this, this thing what this thing will do on people if they will embrace it, if they will like it or not. That's, uh, I'm very curious to see this uh, documentary they're making. Then the Bernheim Museum, it's an installation that we're building in the Dano. It's a stilt house that we built in the water and it's about, uh, 30, 35 meters high and standing on, on one feet. We are in the 
preparation in it, so I hope I think for 2014-15 we'll be able to uh, to build this one. Belgrade, Serbia, that was for me in, um, in a really special work. They asked us to go to build an installation. You see this white square, the walls uh, on top of that hill in um, in Serbia, in Belgrade, and they asked to build an installation there. It's a garden of a castle with a lot of students and public in, in, in the summer, a lot of people come together. And when we went up there, uh, I looked over this uh, river and I said, it's not here on the top of the hill that I want to build something. It's just on the other side of the river, this long strip. There's almost nobody. You see that um, the city is really blocked by, by the river, very difficult to get it over. There, there's, uh, in this park, you have the Museum of Modern Art, and a little bit further, Calatrava will build uh, an opera house. So we choose to, to develop this area. We are working on it. It's a in metal installation, about 650 meters long, and almost 16 meters high. And there, I, we will be able to bring the people over that river to create a kind of boulevard, a street where people will come together, uh, in the night, it will be illuminated. Underneath, we will create programs, the picnics that they can go there and, and to create a big mass public uh, picnics. I would love to, to do this. And, and so, as you see here, just to bring people together. And so, in the night, um, you see this um, yeah, installation as a flame. Carry Center, Shanghai, that's now an installation that we will deliver in September in, uh, in Shanghai. That's a semi public installation is uh, actually in a big shopping mall. They built um, the towers around and that's the connection hall between all these buildings. And there it's a wind that we hanged in the, in the air on the building and in the night we will connect all these uh, wind elements with the red uh, laser. So in the day you see this this big gigantic leaves flying like in, 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 in the air and in the night when you walk when you pass by, you will see this connection with all these red lasers in, uh, in between. And believe me, the calculations to hang these things up at uh, the highs are on 30 meters high on that building, on the glass roof, that's a lot of uh, calculations. So you see, see here in the night when they are connected uh, together. And that's what you see from outside. So it's why it's semi-public um, installation. And it's nice that more and more companies start also to invest in, in, in art, not only for themselves, but also to bring art uh, around, this, around their buildings, in the buildings, again, to, uh, to be able to share this one. I was last week in, uh, in Brazil, in Rio, and they represent that, that wooden installation that we will build in October. That's again, it's like in a, in a shopping mall. And I'm, I'm not afraid to, uh, to build in, in shopping malls and in cities and not only in, in museums, because for me it's really my fight to bring this over and even in commercial places, I think it's important to bring art because there you have really your, your audience. So there's an, um, a wooden installation and there we will weave also the neon lights in, uh, in that installation. So if people will fr feel free to come over and to visit us in uh, October in Brazil. Now, why I'm here for? Queensland Theatre. I think we as artists, we can have so many ideas that you want. We can have the greatest drawings, the greatest sculptures, but I think without people as you that believe in us and that give us a chance to be able to build these things, we will in the end be just nothing. So again, it's, um, it's thank you for, for this, to, to have, have, have us here, to uh, give us a chance to, to build this thing. And how it works, so we came here first, we, we looked through, uh, they sent us a lot of pictures, we, we played with Google Earth, to, to watch what he was doing here, et cetera, et cetera. But this week, we were here the whole week just to have the conversations and to, to, to have the exchange, what is really happening here, culture-wise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this was the first model that we want to build just in front of the, the theater house, is really to bring the, 
the, the experience, the feeling, the, what is happening, the culture of this theater outside to the street and to share it with the rest of the people in, in Brisbane. So that's the first model. Now, after this week, when we go back to, uh, to Belgium, we will work on it. And I think in the next, the next weeks, we will finish the, the, next, the next model and also with the research that we had uh, with everything here, what happens in, 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 in Brisbane, we will be able to do, I think, the presentation um, in, in one, one or two months. I think we will send it. The, why I send you this image is to show the, the shadows that we create under under the installation and what we will do is that under this installation because we cannot dig in, in, in the street to, to put these columns to attach these columns to be able to, to build the installation is that we will create these big concrete benches where these beams, these big wooden beams will be attached in the thing so there is really to connect people that they can sit in the shadow and I hope that times to times they will be able to close that street and that the theater could perform under that that installation, that would that would be great. That's really the moment that, that they will be able to share uh, what they are doing, and not in that that closed black box in the theater. But really to bring it out to uh, to public. So again, there's the, the the shadow. So that is what I would love to to bring here to um, to Brisbane, the end of the year. Thank you. So now it's up to you. If you have any questions or whatever, just shoot them and I will answer. Yeah, that's a good question. The the this color red is for me the most um, the most the color with the most of contradictions. I think we as humans we are full of contradictions. And and this color red, it's uh, in nature. It's or to uh, attract or to push away. It's or um, it's a color where you can. It's like fire. You can heat your hands, but you can burn your fingers. You, it can be blood. It can be dead. It can be life. So there's a color full of contradictions. And I am full of contradictions. You are full of contradictions. So for me, it was really the the most human human color. It's, it depends where we are, it depends what kind of materials we, we, we use. Sometimes we, we work with, with local people, sometimes not, it depends. But I think it's not really about the, the materials that need to be local, I think it's more really about the exchange that we do and the communication around that installation that we share with, with the city and with the people around. I think this is more important than actually the, the materials itself. The materials for me is just to be able to, to to create this this uh, this experience, but many times, like in in Belgrade, the, this installation is so big that it's impossible to transport. So there we look really as for local local uh, construction area. Yeah. I what? In which sense? Yeah, no, the, the, the wood is that, how I explained before, is that uh, all our work is always 100% recyclable. And, and I think that's really a, a really important aspect. We, we, we don't need to forget that we live on this planet and what we take, we need to give back. So um, our, our wood is really come from Sweden and it's really what I explained before is that from a control cut uh, forest and even the, um, the wood that we try to recycle all over. It's, I have in my, in my atelier tons of wood from all over the world and it's nice to, uh, to see it. Huh? Well, there are not that many questions here. Is your intention to show all the No. The, I have permanent installations and some of them here. I think when we, s when then we, when we build this one, I think it will be there at least for 15 years, but I'm sure that you guys will take a petitions to keep it forever. <laughs> they told me that the people here in, 
in Brisbane, they were polite. The guys, you are extremely polite here. <laughs> so, you're not afraid to ask questions. I hope so. No, not at all. I think for everything that, that you build outside, you need to maintain this, uh, these things. But uh, when we build especially these wooden installations, we work always, we educate a team from here to show and to explain how to do it. We also work with an architectural team and with um, engineers, local engineers, not to give us approval, but to show how we do it, that they can watch the, the installations. We have several installations out there almost for, for 10 years and nothing is happening to this. Uh, we make some, some marks and we, we measure them every, every year or every half year if there's some um, a movement in it because it's, it's quite large installations. But believe me, these things are so strong you can walk on it. It's too destroyed. That it's, it's, uh, even I think when we take them down, if we cut them some, some uh, columns, in, even in between, these things stay on. We need really to come with cranes and to, to crock them, to take them down. But um, <coughs> the maintenance, I have a team that travel worldwide to really to check all these um, installations. Yeah. Maintenance is uh, it's only wood, it's natural. So I think it's only after every rain, I think it will uh, be cleaned up now. Oh, a lot of things. Um, I think a lot of things. As a first, um, I like to, to walk in the streets really to absorb Brisbane because I think when you walk around, you really feel how, how, how a city is, uh, is working, and especially after an experience, after so many travels in the last 20 years all over the world, you can really feel the, the difference between, between cities, the logistics, the, the way how people are. Uh, when I say the Brisbane people are super friendly, Believe me, you are. Um, is that when you want to cross the street over the cars, they stop immediately. They, they lift three times their hand up. But I think what is, um, I think you have a fantastic uh, history here in, uh, in in Brisbane, and that is what I had already a couple of nice talks about. Um, that people are showing what what happened here, how uh, the, the the mix of all different uh, cultures. And that is that we will show, that we will explain uh, our research in the books that we will make, that will be, or give the way to public, or uh, we will have the internet site where we will explain all our research and how we will bring cu the, the culture of, of this, this land from the last uh, couple of hundred, hundred years, centuries, how, what, is, what is our feeling and, and how we see it, and, and that we will show in, in, in the books. There, there you will really see our, our research. It's, it's not always easy to show it through, through a presentation as, as this, but believe me, the, the things that we leave behind, it's, it's uh, I think, again, more important than the installation itself. It's just this, this communication. But the research, yeah, it's, um, that's why, why we are here, and, and step by step, we absorb, you know, we absorb this thing. It was my first time here in Australia. It was the last continent that I didn't visit. So, and certainly not the last time. I think I hope to be here soon. Um, and I think, again, every region is, is different. Because, and it, what I learned is that Sydney and Melbourne are completely different cities. So, but, yeah, I think our first contact here with um, Brisbane is, is uh, it's a yeah, good, good, good uh, warm contact. It's, it depends. I think here uh, in Brisbane we will go for 45, 50 kilometers of wood. Sometimes it's only 10 kilometers, sometimes it's a meter. We go some 100, 200 kilometers. Depends um, what kind of insulation, the size of it. <laughs> 40 years ago when I was born. Uh, 
Um, I think, first of all, as, as an artist, you have your own language. Uh, that, that is one thing. I think you will recognize all my, all my works. You can see that's been through my hands. But here we are really... Um, if you will see the, the first model and you will compare the second and the third and the fourth model, the final model, you will see how many things we change to that model that fits really here in and that are, because we were speaking yesterday or two days ago with people really from the, from the city, what is also important for them, not only for this moment, but also what this installation will do in the future, because we always speak about, about history, it's also the future, what they will plant ar around as, as building bridges, whatever, what they will do with the area. For with this, all this, um, uh, all these things, we, we, we bring them together, and from that on, we, we continue our, our research. So you will see that, um, and also it's about the, the density, it's about uh, the colors we will use. Sometimes we do them completely in red, sometimes only natural. Uh, and here we do, we are, we are not sure yet which curves yet that's that you are really studying, how many orange I will use, how many natural color, if we will use a wood from here, if we would use wood from Sweden or from wherever. So all these things we are now, now in, in discussion. So believe me, every sculpture is, is really, really different. I think everything changed from colors during the years. I think wood is a natural uh, element. You will see that the natural wood, uh, it depends what kind of wood we use, sometimes get more gray, sometimes we get more brown. But the, even the, 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 the wood that we paint, we developed uh, with a natural mineral, um, a kind of uh, product that we inject in, in the wood, that the wood stays, uh, if I can say, alive for forever. And that is uh, typical here. I think you have a lot of sun, so we need to uh, uh, use exactly the right paint so that it can handle your sun, your Australian sun. <laughs> it will be not a Belgian paint, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, music. Music, it's that... Um, I think as an artist, I need to close myself off of the world to be able to get so deep as possible in myself with all what I absorb. And the only thing to do this is, is music. And, and music is something that, when, when I listen to music, I, can, I, I hear music on all different um, levels and, and, I, and I really walk through it. When, when, I, when I'm working, it's, it's like traveling and traveling is for me, going through my mind to, like here, what all I absorb, for me, it's I absorb a lot of images, emotions, and all these things, and to go through it easier, for me, it's music. And sometimes it can be classic music, sometimes it can be really hardcore uh, um, rock, it can be electronic. And so music is really, really an, an, an important thing. Also with openings, I always try to bring in music and I try to make like a, a soundscape through the installation. And what I, what, I, what I really hope is that the, these installations became a platform for music uh, performances. It can be dance performance, it can be just, just an opera, it can be uh, one solo player. Um, and that's what I hope that sooner or later they will close that street. I don't, the people of the city itself doesn't like to hear that for a moment, but that uh, will be at the end my fight really to that this sculpture becomes really a platform to make more uh, culture steps and can be dance, theater, music, etc. So music, it's a really, really important uh, aspect in, in my life. I fall asleep with music, I wake up with music. My shower is with music, so everything, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I was I was really surprised when I saw the logo. I was really surprised. It was really something that was matching matching together. Okay. Yeah, I found also. So thank you to be here. I hope uh, to see you all in the end of uh, this year, and that we can build this together and to give this to the people of Brisbane. Thank you.